Richard Southern joins us to chat about some of the day's more interesting stories. We've heard the term Zoom fatigue thrown around a lot lately, Richard, but it turns out there's some actual science behind it. Yeah, where are you on this? Are you, do you like the Zooms? Are you tired of the Zooms? I'm still okay with the Zooms. I'm fine with the Zooms. You know what I hate? That used to be you could answer the phone in any old state, but now you got to make sure <laughs> you don't have bad head. You got to put on a yeah. shirt, you know? Yeah, when they ask us to turn the video on, that's when it gets a bit dicey. I've got to put on oh, a proper shirt. You never shirt, know. Comb my hair. You never know what you're going to see. Mm -hmm. Anywho, new study out of Stanford University finds, yeah, like Zoom fatigue is like a serious thing. Uh, it found that staring at your coworkers' faces up close triggers the fight or flight survival reflex. And that's because the brain is particularly attentive to faces, especially when they're close up on you. And the end result of that is that this kind of stresses you out without even you knowing it, just that fight or flight response. The study also found, Erica, that seeing your own image reflected in the camera can be very stressful. Uh, research shows that consciously and unconsciously, it leads to self-criticism, negative mental health consequences, just saying, looking at yourself and saying, boy, I, I wish I could change that. My hair is a mess. This is like me watching the replay of our segment every day, Erica. <laughs> but this I'm, is a real thing, you know? This is not triggering a fight or flight response right now. I don't know. Maybe. I hope not. I hope our, our viewers haven't fled anywhere. I hope not. <laughs> we're, we're good people, I swear. Uh, yes. We've all been amazed by those recent pictures from the NASA rover on Mars. And now there's a renewed push to learn more about the moon. I love the moon. Tell me about this. Me too, but there's some uh, geopolitical undertones with this one. China and Russia have announced that they're going to build a lunar space station. They put out a joint statement, these two countries, and they said that they're going to build the station. They, they did say they will open it up to other nations, but they say they're going to call it the International Scientific Lunar Station, and they're going to carry out uh, experiments, but also utilization of the moon. So some are thinking that could mean mining of the moon. Of course, these are two countries you could see as potential rivals to the United States. So people are looking at this and saying, well, we're now we're starting to see the you know, politicalization and uh, what have you of space. Things are getting you know, like they are down here on Earth up there, Erica, with countries going at it. All right, and back here on Earth, the big story is all about coronavirus vaccines. They're coming. This is good news. It was our top story today, right? And the Smithsonian has now acquired the vial that contained the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine administered in the United States. This really underscores, like, the, you know, historic time we're living through. So the Smithsonian Museum is going to put that vial of the first dose in there for future uh, generations to look at. Meantime, I love this. A chocolatier uh, out of uh, Europe has come out now with Easter bunnies that have a little vaccine, chocolate vaccine needle, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> All uh, right. Nothing in the vaccine, just delicious chocolate. So there we go. Better times ahead, Eric, with the vaccines. There's right. more I want to say about this. We've unfortunately run out of time. So uh, thank you very much for joining us, Richard. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.